Hello and a warm welcome to this service at Wolsey Chapel, which is a communion service. We're in our generous June season and our guest speaker this morning is David Williams, Bishop of Basingstoke. And so he's going to be following on from Bishop of Sheffield by helping us to think about God's generosity and our response. Now we're going to sing a, a song which reminds us of God's gift of life to us all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, 
only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's Gospel reading is from Luke chapter 18, verses 18 to 30. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. A certain ruler asked Jesus, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honour your father and mother. He replied, I have kept all these since my youth. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, There is still one thing lacking. Sell all that you own and distribute the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. But when he heard this, he became sad for he was very rich. Jesus looked at him and said, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard it said, Then who can be saved? He replied, What is impossible for mortals is possible for God. And Peter said, Look, we have left our homes and followed you. And he said to them, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God who will not get back very much more in this age and in the age to come, eternal life. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. I am David, Bishop of Basingstoke, and I've been a church minister for over 30 years, working in that time in two dioceses, Sheffield, and Winchester. As a Christian I like to think I've been forged in South Yorkshire and formed in Hampshire in the gracious company of many other fellow travellers. Together we have prayed, we have wept, we have laughed and we have sought to follow Jesus in our workplaces, in our communities and in our households. We will have at times found ourselves deep admirers of Jesus comforted in times of difficulty, challenged, I hope, in times of complacency. Generous Dune is a collaboration between Winchester and Sheffield. For a whole month we have the chance to spend time reading Luke's Gospel and allowing the person, the teaching and the actions of Jesus of Nazareth to catch our imagination afresh. Listen to the daily podcasts as well as these Sunday sermons. You'll hear the voices of young and old, of men and women from Hampshire and South Yorkshire, and allow Jesus 
to shape you, your faith and your commitment to the community of those who follow Jesus. We have unashamedly interpreted Luke's Gospel through the lens of generosity. And although this series was planned some time ago, it has all been written during the lockdown period of COVID-19 in 2020. Generosity has surely been one of the defining points of the way people have responded and adapted to this global crisis. Generosity that has involved key workers taking risks every day they go to work, adapting their work practices, and particularly care staff and the health service staff having to work in higher risk environments. And many of us, well, I think that includes all of us, having to become more attentive to those who live closest to us. Generosity can be so deep that it is profoundly pervasive in all of our lives. Money is only part of generosity. It's expressed through how we share our time, our space, our gifts, our friendships, and it becomes part of how we transform society. In this morning's reading, we encounter a young man who is curious and intrigued by Jesus. He is very devout and very religious. I suspect he spent time in the crowds that gathered around Jesus and finds himself wanting to know more. The three years of Jesus' ministry as a public figure are mostly focused around his local area. People came in their thousands to see him, to hear him and to watch what he did. Jesus taught about how the penitent could enter the kingdom of God. He taught about humility. He taught about gratitude and the extraordinary challenge of entering God's kingdom and sharing in the life of the age to come. But in this chapter, the geography has changed. Instead of the rolling Galilean hills, the natural places where people could sit and listen, the houses that, that offered hospitality, the synagogues where Jesus preached, he is now on the road intentionally towards Jerusalem. The crowds have vanished. It is becoming a more hostile environment. Little wonder that his followers were asking questions and wondering where it was all going. This man, described as a rich ruler, appears confident, well organised. He looks Jesus in the face and he calls him good but he's going to turn away from the conversation very sad. <coughs> the young man's confidence, I think, is rooted in his own abilities, including his money. But Jesus' offer is something very different. Would he accept God's kingdom? Like a child with a humble trust that allows God to be God? Or was he about to discover that his basic confidence lay in his possessions. When you give things away, the things you hold dear, for some of us it's our time, it's our friendship, it's our attention, it's our service, or it's our money, you often will discover that the person who benefits most is the person who is the giver. Because you're intentionally discovering a new trust in God. A trust that discovers that true wealth is found in a heavenly dimension. And whenever a Christian community, all the way down the ages, no matter where in the country or the world it's situated, whenever a Christian community starts living like that, there is a growth of selflessness and there's an increase in trust in the common life. Church members and those around begin to glimpse what God's new world is really like and they learn to live that way more and more. I find myself wondering what would have happened to that young man if he'd taken the challenge, if he'd given away all his money and followed Jesus. He would have continued the journey for the rest of the week. He would have seen Jesus hailed as king and then a few days later, he would have witnessed the crowd call for his friend, Jesus, to be crucified. 
he would have seen soldiers come to the garden to arrest Jesus. And in the moment of arrest, to see Jesus even then heal the ear of the servant of the temple guard. And as they pounded nails into his hands, he would have heard Jesus say, Father, forgive them. He would have seen that Jesus came not to bring judgment, but to subject himself to judgment, that we might instead be those who receive not God's judgment, but God's love. And if we take that journey, and if we hear God, we will discover that he gives himself to us, for us to receive him. And as he is emptied, he experiences abandonment and a cosmic, infinite agony so that you and I get embraced and loved and receive the Holy Spirit of love. This is the lesson that this rich man did not get to learn. He was being invited into the company of the one who would give himself utterly for you. He, Jesus, the one who heals, who fills you with his love and utterly frees us. I want to suggest there is nothing more deadly than relying on our own abilities and on our own possessions, of spending our whole life to achieve our own worth when Jesus offers it to us out of his infinite generosity towards us. That freedom enables us to give ourselves to him and to give ourselves to other people. Discipleship means putting Jesus ahead of our family, ahead of our money, ahead of our career. It's a radical call, but it is also a gentle call, for he is a wise and gentle counsellor. The rich ruler went away sad, but can I urge you to be open to Jesus' call to you today? After the resurrection of Jesus, many thousands decided to call him their king. They began to gather, teaching and encouraging, worshipping and praising, baptising and proclaiming God's grace. Many joined the new gathering of Jesus' followers every day, we are told. And then almost as a throwaway remark, we're told nobody was in need in that company. For these people shared their lives, they shared their food, they shared their time and they shared their prayers. I hope this passage and over the last few days you will have found yourself compelled afresh at a vision of authentic generosity. When our giving of money comes from the basis, from that basis, from that basis of God's generosity towards us, I believe the church will find its needs are met. This morning I want you to take a personal step. I want you to ask the Lord to give you a fresh vision of his generosity towards you. And would you, in the light of that, be prepared to prayerfully review your own commitments, including your own financial giving? I've got the hugest of respects for those who quietly give wherever they are prompted to give, almost the right hand not knowing what the left hand is doing. But I wonder if in this era I can also ask you to join together in offering a tangible, generous commitment to your own local church and to support it in the serving of our communities. Where do you start? Well, you could consider giving a significant one-off gift to your own local church. And secondly, as part of your commitment to generosity, would you take time to review your regular giving to the church? Would you consider increasing it? Or if you don't give regularly to the church already, would you consider starting? I say all that, understanding it's also imperative that we are very sensitive to the individual financial situations of each one of us. So if your circumstances have changed significantly in the last few weeks and months, it may be that through your prayerful giving review, you rightfully decide to reduce the amount that you give away. In Sheffield and in Winchester, 
It has been the experience of radical generosity in every way that has most significantly shaped who I am and my understanding of God, my understanding of God's love and of the prayers that end up being answered beyond our imagining. Amen. We affirm our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This, this is, is our faith. faith. We, we believe, believe and trust, trust in one God, Father, Father Son and Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. We pray for grace and strength to live as those accountable before God, saying, Lord, in your mercy, make, make us, us faithful, faithful stewards, stewards of, of your goodness. We pray for the leaders of nations, for honesty, integrity, justice and compassion in national and international politics and especially in the area of debt. Lord, in your mercy, make, make us, us faithful, faithful stewards of your goodness. We pray for the Church in all the world. May those you have called to leadership have renewed passion for the gospel, eagerness for the health of the church and accountability in all their ways that they may reflect the glory of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, make, make us, us faithful stewards of your goodness. We pray for the sick, and the sorrowing, and all who need your healing touch, and for the Church's ministry of healing and caring. May we give realistically, so that your Church may minister effectively. Lord, in your mercy, make, make us faithful stewards of your goodness. Father, we bless you for all who have gone before us in the faith of Christ, and especially we remember. Merciful Father, accept these prayers. For, For the, the sake, sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels, praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes, and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you for nourishing us with these heavenly gifts. May our communion strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and make us grow in love. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our final song. go on praying for all those who are still in lockdown, remembering the vulnerable, those whom we care for and love. But we remember the generosity of God in giving us so many good things. So the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.